Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Delighted to be joined here at the Marker Hotel um, by none other than Gary Neville, here with the Premier League trophy, um, here at the Cabri's event. You're also in the, the Board Gash Theatre this evening, is it? The what, sorry? The theatre? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm in the theatre. I didn't know what it was called, but I'm in the theatre, definitely. Just over here, actually. Yeah, oh, right can't wait. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, anyway, uh, you're here over here with the Premier League. Um, what's been your thoughts so far of the Premier League itself? The season. I actually think it's been a good start to the season. I was very critical two or three years ago about the quality in the Premier League. Uh, I thought for all the money that was being spent, the performances in Europe weren't good enough. The performances in the Premier League weren't good enough. It wasn't as high quality as it should have been. The last two seasons, I think there's been a huge improvement. Uh, last season culminating in English teams getting to the Champions League and Europa League finals and basically both teams being from England in each of those finals. So I think that to me is a real pinnacle uh, and actually, big, the biggest sign that you know the, the standing in the Premier League last year, particularly at the top with City and Liverpool, was incredible. Never seen anything like it in my life. So I do think now that standard has got back to a high level. I think the introduction of Conte, Guardiola, Mourinho, Klopp, Pochettino, two three years ago, now now Unai Emery, I do think has basically meant that the, that you know that basically the uh, the standard has just driven up. The players have got driven up, and I think we've got back to a point whereby it looked like German football, Spanish football was going to dominate forever, but now it looks like it's coming back to an English cycle. Yeah, and just in regards to the Premier League, you've obviously won it countless times now, but uh, what's kind of been your, your favourite memory of the Premier League or your, your favourite team in, in that period that you played in? The whole Premier League? Yeah, yeah. when, when you were there. <laughs> our team, obviously. No, I would pick our team. No, I just mean, of, you know, you had the, kind of the Ronaldo team, then you had Cantona. Oh, sorry. That type of thing. I, I would say... Um, or what was the best team of them? Do you know something? That the 2008 team was sensational when Ronaldo, Tevez and Rooney were up front. Vidic and Ferdinand centre-backs, that was just sensational, that team. World-class players. Uh, the 1999 team is my favourite because of the fact that just the people who were, in, who were in it, just, you know, six of us that basically come through the ranks. Um, you obviously Roy had been there for seven or eight years, Dennis had been there for a long time. Um, and I just feel that was the team that we just felt the most popular the most connected to the fans but the 2008 team was a brilliant team and so was the 95, 94, 96 teams those teams that won the doubles they were brilliant as well but the 99 teams for the treble and the fact of for me the characters who were, who were in it and the you know the friendships I had would probably make it the best Yeah, you touched on Roy Keane there and um, obviously that time as well how big a factor was he I suppose in, in that team? It, it was a huge factor I said earlier on today doing another interview that there wasn't a player that you would want more to lead the team out than Roy Keane. Every single player in our club thought the same thing, uh, that drove the standards, that mirrored the manager's demands, standards day in, day out, um, and was the biggest, most influential football player that I've ever played with, um, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, he's played with quite a few Irish players as well, John O'Shea as well. How, how would you rank him, I suppose, um, in terms of players you've played with? Because he was so versatile and he could yeah. play anywhere in the longevity of his career then as well. John was a fantastic player for United, talented, left and right foot play, numerous different positions, adaptable, um, good character, good personality, popular in the changing room. Um, yeah, I, to, to me, there were, you know, you think about over the years at United, they sort of squad of 22 players. And um, we had essential players in the squad that you knew would, over a season, help win you the league. And John O'Shea was one of those players who would, who would basically enable us to be able to do things differently maybe some weeks. The times when I was left out and John played right back, or sometimes Dennis would be left out, or Phil would be left out, or Patrice Everett would be left out, and he'd play left back, he'd play centre back, he'd play holding midfield. You know, really graceful on the ball, really good temperament, um, not phased by anything. Um, you no, know, he's a great lad as well. Decent in goals as well, isn't he? Who's that, sorry? He's decent in goals as well. Yes, isn't he? <laughs> goalkeeper. Got the right size for it, you see. And he's mad, he's Irish. Yeah, yeah. But um, Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say whatever you like. Um, just, in, just in regards then, uh, just what are your feelings on Man United uh, so far this season anyway? It's been, it was a good start, I suppose. No, it's kinda... Look, at the end of the day, it's fine lines. You know, Wolves should have won. Crystal Palace should have won. Uh, Southampton should have won. And yet, it looks like an indifferent start. And that can happen sometimes when you, you've got a group of younger players. It is a younger team. It is a team that's a little immature, lacks a little bit of know-how, a bit of experience. And I think those results are going to come this season. 
but the club the path I've chosen is to go down that route go with it trust in it allow those players to develop you add to it and get a couple more out along the way will be welcome and add some more quality and more experience you know not experience in 32 33 I'm talking about experience 27 to 30 that type of perfect age where I think these players at the moment just need a little bit more know-how around them a little bit more guile um, and they would have got through those games against Crystal Palace and against Southampton um, and Wolves they would have got through them and, and, and got the right result so there's a fine line between the right result and sometimes uh, the wrong result based upon just little things that happen in a game moments yeah do you think that uh, Solskjaer is the, is the right man to lead them forward then for now? well yeah because I trust it. I, I, I've, 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 I always have to no, absolutely throw it down here isn't it? <laughs> I always trust in the Manchester United manager I trust in Oli I, I trust in the fact that I trusted in David Moyes I trusted in Louis van Gaal I trusted in Jose Mourinho it didn't work out but it's perception as to whether you think they've done a good job or not, uh, or a bad job. You know, Jose won trophies, Lou van Gaal won trophies, David Moyes was only given eight months. All he now needs to be given time to be able to do what he wants to do with the squad and do what he wants with the team. There is no quick fix at United. Yeah. Well, Gary, I appreciate your time. It's going to down here. So I apologise for that, but thanks very much for your well time, done. Ari. Well done, mate. Enjoy your time here in Ireland, Thank Ari. You.